Civic Welfare Training Service promotes activities contributory to the general welfare and betterment of life of the members of the community. Module 3. Good Citizenship. The intended learning outcomes for this module are 1. By the end of this topic or chapter, you must be able to understand the principles underpinning good citizenship, rights and responsibilities of citizens, service. 2. Describe and analyze issues that relate to good citizenship values, rights, and responsibilities of student citizens in the country. 3. Discuss good manners and right conduct important in school. 4. Make reasonable decisions, address issues, explain concepts and or solve problems using relevant examples pertaining to exercise of rights, fulfillment of obligations, and promotion of values toward responsible citizenship. 5. Appreciate the significance of good citizenship towards the attainment of national development. 6. Creating and improving awareness of values and their importance and role. According to Commissioner Teresita D. Baltazar, good governance is not enough you let us work on being good citizens. The NSTP as citizenship training focuses on translating the good citizenship values derived from the preamble of the Philippine Constitution into concrete action to build our nation. Modules on Good Citizenship Values, 2004. Hence, the emphasis is placed on the 16 basic Filipino values based on the 1987 Philippine Constitution. The basic values of the Filipinos are reflected in the preamble of the Constitution which the NSTPCWTS intends to impart to students as the service providers and to the community as a recipient. It emphasizes the 16 basic Filipino values. This is the preamble of the Philippines. We, the sovereign Filipino people, imploring the aid of the Almighty God to build a just and humane society and establish a government that shall embody our ideals and aspirations, promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves our prosperity, the blessings of independence, and democracy under the rule of law and a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and do ordain and promulgate this constitution. Clustered below are the good citizenship values that are reflected in the preamble of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. 1. Faith in the Almighty God. 2. Respect for life. 3. Order. 4. Work. 5. Concern for the family and future generations. 6. Unity. 7. Equality. 8. Respect for the law and government. 9. Patriotism. 10. Promotion of common good. Eleven. Love. Twelve. Freedom. Thirteen. Peace. Fourteen. Truth. Fifteen. Justice. Sixteen. Concern for the environment. Every Filipino should acknowledge the existence of unique faith in God. Everybody should think on the blessings of God in their lives as well as the unique gift of faith and how they can continue to live a life of faith in God. Every Filipino child needs to be helped to form his own values consistent with basic Filipino values. If he is to grow into a citizen who is Maka Dios, Maka Dao, Maka Bayan, and Maka Kali Kasan. Maka Dios Cluster 1. Faith in the Almighty God be God-fearing and live according to His will. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that rewards those who diligently seek Him. 2. Work be diligent and earn an honest living. Do not engage in crime and corruption. Confucius says, give fish to man, he will have food to eat for a day. Teach him to fish and he shall have food throughout his lifetime. 3. Concern for the family and future generations. Look after the welfare of your family and future generations. We hold our dreams and ideals close to our hearts, where the promises are made to the future generations. By John Rachels. 4. Order. 
Respect the human rights of another and comply with your duties and responsibilities. When it comes to order, God is the best example. He showed order when creating the universe. 5. Respect for life. Obey the laws of the land and support government programs. Respect life, revere life. There is nothing more holy than life. The Makat Tao Cluster. 6. Love. Looks after the good and welfare of one another. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish and irritable. Love does not keep a record of the wrongs. Love is not happy with evil but delights in the truth. Love never gives up. Love never fails. Love is eternal. There is faith, hope and the greatest of these is love. Quote. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Seven. Peace. Live and work together in harmony. Avoid violence as a way of settling disputes. It isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. By Eleanor Roosevelt. Eight. Freedom. Assert your rights to be able to do the right things. May we think of freedom not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. By Peter Marshall. 9. Truth. Stand up for the truth and avoid intrigue and mudslinging. Never be afraid to raise your voice for honesty and truth and compassion against and lying and greed. If people all over the world would do this, it would change the earth. By William Faulkner. 10. Justice. Give everyone their due. Do not oppress or take advantage of anyone. Let the first act of every morning be to make the following resolve for the day. I shall not fear anyone on earth. I shall fear only God. I shall not bear ill will toward anyone. I shall not submit to injustice from anyone. I shall conquer untruth by truth. And resisting untruth, I shall put up with all suffering. Truth never damages a cause that is just. By Mahatma Gandhi. 11. Cluster. 11. Unity. Work together and share with one another. I can do things you cannot, you can do things I cannot, together we can do great things. By Mother Teresa. 12. Equality treat one another as brothers and sisters being children of one God and one nation. Equality is not regarding different things similarly. Equality is in regarding different things differently. By Tom Robbins. 13. Respect for the law and government. Obey the laws of the land and support government programs. No man is above the law and no man is below it. Nor do we ask any man's permission when we ask him to obey it. By Theodore Roosevelt. 14. Patriotism. Place the good of the country above one's own. Patriotism means to stand by the country. It does not mean to stand by the president or any other public officials save exactly to the degree in which he himself stands by the country. We're blessed with the opportunity to stand for something liberty and freedom and fairness. And these are things worth fighting for, worth devoting our lives to. Ronald Reagan 15. Promotion of common good put the welfare of the greater number of people who are over one's own. Do not be greedy and selfish. Law, an ordinance of reason for the common good, made by him who cares of the community. The Macaw Cali Cassin Cluster. 16. Concern for the environment. The earth will not continue to offer its harvest, except with faithful steward. We cannot say we love the land and then take steps to destroy it for the use by future generations. By Pope John Paul II. 15. The Bill of Rights in the Philippines is a set of constitutional provisions that protect the fundamental rights and liberties of Filipino citizens. Here is a summary of its key points. Due process and equal protection. Section 1. No person can be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, and everyone is entitled to equal protection under the laws. 
Protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. Section 2. People have the right to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects, and search warrants can only be issued with probable cause determined by a judge. Privacy of Communication and Correspondence. Section 3. Communication and correspondence privacy is inviolable, except under lawful court orders or when public safety requires it. Evidence obtained in violation of this is inadmissible. Freedom of speech, expression, and assembly. Section 4. The freedom of speech, expression, and the press is protected, as well as the right to peaceful assembly and petitioning the government for grievances. Freedom of religion. Section 5. Laws regarding religion are not to be passed, and individuals are free to practice their religion without discrimination or requiring a religious test for civil or political rights. Liberty of abode and travel. Section 6. The liberty to choose one's residence is protected, and the right to travel can only be restricted for national security, public safety, or public health reasons. Right to information. Section 7. People have the right to access official records, documents, and papers related to government actions, subject to limitations by law. Right to form associations and unions. Section 8. Individuals, including those in the public and private sectors, have the right to form unions, associations, or societies, as long as they are not contrary to the law. Protection of private property. Section 9. Private property cannot be taken for public use without just compensation. Obligation of contracts. Section 10. Laws cannot impair the obligation of contracts. Access to courts and legal assistance. Section 11. Everyone has free access to courts and quasi-judicial bodies, and adequate legal assistance cannot be denied due to poverty. Rights of accused persons. Section 12. Accused persons have the right to remain silent, legal counsel, and protection against torture or inhumane treatment. Confessions obtained in violation of these rights are inadmissible. Right to bail. Section 13. Except for those charged with serious offenses, individuals have the right to bail. Excessive bail is prohibited. Presumption of innocence. Section 14. Accused individuals are presumed innocent until proven guilty and have the right to a fair and speedy trial. Habeas Corpus. Section 15. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus can only be suspended in cases of invasion or rebellion when public safety requires it. Speedy disposition of cases. Section 16. All persons have the right to a speedy disposition of their cases in all judicial, quasi-judicial, or administrative bodies. Right against self-incrimination. Section 17. No person can be compelled to be a witness against themselves. Protection of political beliefs and involuntary servitude. Section 18. Detention solely based on political beliefs is prohibited. And involuntary servitude is only allowed as punishment for a crime. Prohibition of excessive fines, cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment. Section 19. Excessive fines, cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment are not allowed. The death penalty is prohibited unless compelling reasons are provided by Congress. Imprisonment for debt or poll tax. Section 20. No person can be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. Double jeopardy. Section 21. No person can be tried or punished twice for the same offense. Ex post facto laws and bills of attainder. Section 22. Ex post facto laws and bills of attainder are prohibited. These provisions collectively outline the basic rights and protections afforded to Filipino citizens under the Philippine Constitution. The flag was made of silk. The sun represents liberty, and its eight rays represent the first eight provinces that revolted against Spain. The three stars stand for the three big islands of the Philippines, namely Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. As for the colors used, white represents hope for equality, while the blue stripe stands for peace, truth, and justice. 
Finally, the red stripe symbolizes patriotism and valor. However, when the two stripes are interchanged, this signals that the country is in a state of war. The Philippine flag, one of the national symbols of the country, has a rich story behind it as it stood as witness to the glorious events of Philippine history. While it symbolizes the nation's ideals, patriotism, and aspirations, the flag also stands for the freedom that Filipino revolution leaders and ancestors had fought and died for. Construction of the Philippine flag. Today, the official Philippine flag is rectangular in form with an aspect ratio of 1 is to 2, meaning the length of the flag is twice longer than its width. It has a horizontal band of two colors of equal size, having on top is the royal blue and red at the bottom. The left end, viewer's left, of the flag has a white equilateral triangle, three sides equal to the width of the flag, which inside has symbols of three starts at each corner and a sun having eight rays is in the center of the triangle. Protocol of the Philippine flag, sources of information come from the Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Trade and Industry. RAW 8491 Code of the National Flag Section 34, Columnist Nelly Favis Vilafuerte, and Christine G. Dulnan. 1. The flag should never be used to cover a desk or table or as a covering for a ceiling, or as a receptacle or as drapery of any sort whatsoever. 2. When used to cover a casket, the flag should be placed so that the equilateral triangle with the sun and the stars is at the head, with the blue field to the right and the red field to the left of the deceased. 3. When Philippine and foreign flags are displayed on flag poles, the poles should be at the same height, with the Philippine flag on the left as the group is viewed. Four. No flag or pennant should ever be flown above the Philippine flag. Five. The flag should never be dipped on any person or object. Six. The flag should never be draped over the head, top, or other part of a vehicle or of a railroad train or boat. When the flag is displayed in a motor car, the staff should be affixed firmly to the right fender such that the flag shall not touch the body of the car. Seven. When the flag is in such a condition that it is no longer a fitting emblem of display, it should be destroyed preferably by burning. 8. The likeness of Philippine flag should never be embroidered or painted on wearing apparel and advertising materials. 9. It is improper to hold the flag, to spread it, during the singing of the Philippine national anthem. 10. During the ceremony of hoisting or lowering the flag or when the flag is passing in a parade or in a review, all people present should face the flag, stand at attention and salute. Men should remove their hats or headdresses with the right hand and hold them at the left breast. Women should salute by placing their right hand over the heart. The flag shall be flown at half-mast as a sign of mourning on all the buildings and places where it is displayed, as provided for in this act on the day of official announcement of the death of any of the following officials. The president or a former president for 10 days. The vice president, the chief justice, the president of the senate and the speaker of the house of representatives, for 7 days, and other persons to be determined by the institute, for any period less than 7 days. The flag shall be flown at half-mast on all the buildings and places where the decedent was holding office, on the Day of death until the day of interment of an incumbent member of the Supreme Court, the Cabinet, the Senate, or the House of Representatives, and such other persons as may be determined by the Institute. The flag when flown at half-mast shall be first hoisted to the peak for a moment then lowered to the half-mast position. The flag shall again be raised to the peak before it is lowered for the day. Folding of the Philippine flag Prohibited Acts on the Philippine Flag 1. To mutilate, deface, trample on, cast contempt, or commit any act or omission casting dishonor or ridicule upon the national flag or over its surface. 2. To dip the national flag to any person or object by way of compliment or salute. 3. 
to use the national flag as drapery, festoon, or tablecloth. 4. To use the national flag as pennant in the hood, side, back and top of motor vehicles. 5. To use the national flag as a staff or whip. 6. To use the national flag for unveiling monuments or statues. 7. To use the national flag as trademarks, or for industrial, commercial, or agricultural labels or designs. 8. To display the national flag under any painting or picture. 9. To display the national flag horizontally. It shall always be hoisted aloft and be allowed to fall freely. 10. To display the national flag below any platform. 11. To display the national flag in discotheques, cockpits, night and day clubs, casinos, gambling joints and places of vice or where frivolity prevails. 12. To wear the national flag in whole or in part as a costume or uniform. 13. To add any word, figure, mark, picture, design, drawings, advertisement, or imprint of any nature on the national flag. 14. To print, paint or attach representation of the national flag on handkerchiefs, napkins, cushions, and articles of merchandise. The Pledge of Allegiance to the Philippine flag is one of two national pledges, the other being the Patriotic Oath which is the Philippine National Pledge. The Pledge of Allegiance to the Philippine flag is recited at flag ceremonies immediately after the Patriotic Oath or, if the Patriotic Oath is not recited, after the National Anthem. The pledge was legalized under Executive Order No. 343, finalized by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts from a draft prepared by the Commission on the Filipino Language, approved by then-President Fidel V. Ramos on Independence Day, June 12, 1996, and subsequently by the Flag and Heraldic Code of the Philippines, or Republic Act No. 8491. The law requires the pledge to be recited while standing with the right hand with palm open raised shoulder high. The law makes no statement of what language the pledge must be recited in, but the pledge is written, and therefore recited, in Filipino. The Philippine National Anthem was composed by Julian Felipe, a Filipino music teacher and composer of Cavite. It was first played by the Band of San Francisco de Malabon during the unfurling of the Filipino flag at Cawid during the Independence Day ceremony. For more than a year, the anthem remained without words. Towards the end of August of 1899, a young poet-soldier named Jose Palma wrote the poem titled Filipinas. This poem expressed in elegant Spanish verses the ardent patriotism and fighting spirit of the Filipino people. It became the words of the anthem, and today, the anthem is sung in Filipino, its official lyrics translated by Felipe de Leon, from the original Spanish lyrics in the early 1900s. The National Motto The national coat of arms shall have pale ways of two pieces, azure and gules, a chief argent studded with three mullets equidistant from each other, and, in point of honor, ovoid argent over all the sun rayonant with eight minor and shall be the scroll with the words, D lesser rays. Beneath shall be the scroll with the words, Republica ing Pilipinas, inscribed thereon. Section 41, Republic Act No. 8491. The Great Seal shall be circular in form. With the same specifications with the National Coat of Arms, surrounding the arms is a double marginal circle which the official name of the Philippines in Filipino was inscribed in. The color of the arms shall not be deemed essential, but tincture representation must be used. The Great Seal must also bear the national motto of the Philippines. The Great Seal shall be affixed to or placed upon all commissions signed by the President and upon such other official documents and papers of the Republic of the Philippines as may be provided by law, or as may be required by custom and usage. The President shall have custody of the Great Seal. Section 42-43, Republic Act No. 8491.
The twelve little things we can do for our country are small acts of patriotism. Adopted from Twelve Little Things We Can Do For Our Country. Alexander Laxon. 1. Follow traffic rules. Follow the law. Traffic rules are the most basic of our country's laws. If we learn to follow them, it could be the lowest form of national discipline we can develop as a people. A culture of discipline is crucial to our destiny as a nation. Whenever we follow traffic rules, we show our love for our neighbor, our love for the Filipino. 2. Always ask for an official receipt. Asking for oars leads to higher tax collections, which means more funds for our government, which could strengthen our economy and lead us to progress. Whenever we help our government in helping our people, we show our love for our neighbor. 3. Don't buy smuggled goods. Buy local. Buy Filipino. Our money should support our economy, not the economy of other countries. Buying Filipino means supporting the Filipino. Whenever we support one another as Filipinos, we show our love for our neighbors. 4. Speak positively about us and our country. Every Filipino is an ambassador of our country. Each one of us, wherever we may be, is a salesman of our country. Whenever we speak positively of our people, we show our love for our neighbors. 5. Respect your traffic officer, policeman and other public servant. Respect honors and dignifies a man. It compels him to do his job right. There is love of neighbor whenever we respect those in authority. 6. Throw your garbage properly. Segregate. Recycle. Conserve. Philippines is the country given to us as a people. It is the birthplace of our race. It is the home of the Filipino. We should keep it beautiful. When we keep our environment and our country clean, we show our love for our people. Seven. Support your church. When we help our church, we help our Creator in His works on earth. Whenever we help our church, we show love for our neighbor. Eight. During elections, do your solemn duty. When we fight for our votes, we fight for our right to make our own destiny as a people and as a nation. There is love of neighbor when we elect good leaders for our country and people. Nine. Pay your employees well. A company must bring prosperity not only to its owners but also to its employees. Blessings must be shared. It builds families. It builds our nation. There is love of neighbor when we value and pay our employees appropriately. 10. Pay your taxes. Taxes are the lifeblood of our government. It is what builds our public schools, hospitals and roads. It is what pays our teachers, soldiers and other public servants. There is love of neighbor whenever we pay our taxes properly so our government can help more people. 11. Adopt a scholar or a poor child. Investing on our youth is investing on our country's future. Every family who can afford should adopt one poor child as a scholar. There is love of neighbor whenever we help a child get an education. 12. Be a good parent. Teach your kids to love our country. If we start planting seeds of patriotism in the hearts and minds of our youth today, they will become giant patriots of our country someday. There is love of neighbor whenever we teach and raise our children as patriots, by loving our country through loving our people. 12 little things we can do for our country. Practice patriotism.